Well, hello, physics students, and welcome to this cold day uh, edition of a physics video lecture. Uh, this video lecture is going to introduce us to our new topic within this unit, and this topic is called, very simply, work. Okay, so, so far, up to this point, we have been dealing with different types of energy. We've talked about conservation of energy, um, but we want to understand today how, um, like what work actually is and, and what work really actually means in terms of energy and conservation of energy. So first things first here, if we take a look at our, at this scenario that we have up here, this scenario we've been working with quite a bit actually um, within the last few days, okay? So we have uh, this crate, it's smushed, uh, it, it's, it's pushed up against the spring so that spring is smushed or it's compressed. Um, so that's kind of our initial snapshot there. And then our final snapshot, that, that, um, that crate has gained some height and it's moving. So to fill out this, um, this LOL diagram, what we said was that uh, our objects within this system were the crate, and the spring, and the earth. Okay, and then... Um, identifying our types of energy that we have initially. Well, we said that we initially just had all elastic potential energy. And then that got transformed into, you know, some amount of PEG and KE. So I think we kind of did something like this, right? Um, the main key here was that we were, that we were um, being sure to say, hey, I have four bars of elastic potential energy, therefore I have four bars of mechanical energy on this side, therefore I need four bars of mechanical energy on this side, okay? And then we've been working on writing out these conservation of energy equations. So here we have been writing an elastic potential energy initial is then equal to my Ke final plus my gravitational potential energy final, okay? So, so that scenario is pretty simple, okay? Just straight up conservation of energy, understanding that whatever uh, amount of mechanical energy you have here, that's the same amount you have here. But now if I, th let's throw a little wrinkle into this and let's say that now in this similar scenario down here, that now only the crate and the earth are in that system. Okay, so we're gonna say only the crate and the earth are now in that system. So what does that mean for us? Well, if we look at just the crate and the earth initially here, there is no energy. There's absolutely none. This crate's at rest, uh, it's at a zero position, spring's not in the system, so there is no elastic potential energy. But now finally, we have the same types of energy that we had up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write those in down here. So I have this same amount of kinetic energy and I have this same amount of gravitational potential energy. But now we have to ask ourselves, where did that energy come from? All right, and this is where the energy flow diagram comes in handy, this O part. So what we're gonna say here is that we're gonna say well, energy is actually now being input into this system. The next question we ask ourselves is, what is inputting that energy? What's adding that energy to the system? Well, in this case, it is now our spring. Our spring, which is now outside of our system, is inputting energy in. Okay, so our spring is actually putting energy in. Now. Let's just think about this. What is the spring doing? The spring right now is compressed, but after it's released, what does it do? It applies a force on this crate, and it allows this, uh, this crate to displace itself this way, but it also transfers its energy into this crate. Because of the force that's applied to this crate, we say that work has been done on this crate. So now, if I'm gonna write my conservation of energy equation, I'm now going to say that the work done by the spring is equal to 
that KE final plus the gravitational potential energy final. So notice, just by removing an object from the system, these LOL diagrams can, can show us something completely different, and this scenario can be analyzed in a completely different way. And the, and the key here is I want you to understand how this now being an open system where we have an outside object applying an outside force on the system that changes what's going on in terms of our mechanical energy. We actually add mechanical energy to our system to then end up with that same amount of energy that's been added. So this slide right here is showing us what work does for us in terms of energy and conservation of energy. The next slide is going to go through what work actually is um, and, how, and, and how work actually affects energy that's present. All right, so we kind of saw work in action in terms of its effect on energy. Um, so really... To, to kind of summarize what you saw in the last slide, to have a change in mechanical energy, work has to be done on the system. So therefore, work is just a change in energy. So work is a change in energy, and it's caused by a force outside of the system. So again, going back to our last slide in that scenario, the spring was no longer in the system. So the spring was actually supplying this force to the system to cause that change in energy, okay? To give that system the energy that we saw in that final snapshot, okay? So there's our um, there's our definition for work. Work is a change of energy. So now our mathematical definition is we say that work is equal to a force parallel times a displacement. Okay. Now what I mean by force parallel is this force is parallel to our displacement. Okay. So if I have a displacement that is horizontal... That means that my force is also directed horizontally, okay? So there's what I'm talking about in terms of uh, force parallel. And now, again, relating back to that last scenario we were looking at, that spring was applying a force, and that force was parallel to the displacement of that crate, okay? Okay. While that crate was in contact with the spring, the spring released, it applied a force this way, and the crate also displaced itself this way. So now, moving on to types, or maybe the better way to put this is directions of work. First, we have positive work, okay? So I'm going to call this positive work. Now, if we have positive work, that means that we actually have uh, an increase in energy. So what we could say is we have a positive change in energy there too, I suppose. So if we have positive work, we have an increase in energy. To have positive work, our force needs to be in the same direction as our displacement. Okay? So again, there's a lot of a lot of examples we can come up with this for this one. We saw that again on the previous slide. That spring was pushing this way, the displacement of that crate was in the same direction. So that means we had positive work, we had an increase in that system's energy. Now the next type we could have, we could have negative work. Uh, this one seems pretty self-explanatory with the same logic. This would mean that we have a decrease in energy. So now what this means is that, okay, well, my force is acting this way, but my displacement is in the opposite direction, okay? Now, an example of that could be um, if, if you play baseball, you slide into home plate, you actually lose energy there, okay? And the reason you're losing energy is because friction, friction is actually acting opposite your displacement, okay? 
Now the last type or direction of work is zero work. Wow, I don't know what I just spelled there. All right, work, zero work. This means we have no change. No change in energy. And this occurs when our force is perpendicular to our displacement. A good example of this one is a waiter uh, holding onto a tray of food and moving around the room. So that force the waiter is applying to the tray of food is pointing upwards, but the waiter's moving around the room horizontally. In that case, there's zero work because the force is not perpendicular to the displacement. All right, so here's your introduction to work. This slide is going through kind of the definition of work. The previous slide is showing what work actually does in terms of energy, and we're kind of going through that and summarizing that down here as well. So there is your video lecture for Wednesday, this cold day. Thursday, tomorrow, we're going to be taking a knowledge check that that's going to be reviewing and going through stuff we've already covered and also incorporating some of this new stuff related to work. So take care, physics students. We'll see you soon.